Today, I'm going to show you how we found an injector failure on a 60 series Detroit, and we're going to start right now. Let's get into it. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands, strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand, oh I've been running from the law. Hey guys, this is Adam with TAT Express, and on this channel we go over everything about diesel trucks, whether it's maintenance, repair, or troubleshooting. Make sure to subscribe to us and turn on that notification bell so you know next time we release another video. If you have a question about your truck, please leave us a comment below. We'll be more than happy to help you. So today we're gonna go over an injector failure for a 60 series Detroit. Okay, we, this truck originally came in for a cam repair. We replaced it with a cam. The truck was still running pretty rough. Uh, so what we end up doing is uh, digging into it a little bit further. Okay, so we did an injector cutout test and we couldn't pinpoint which injector was going out on us. So what we've done, we have removed the jake brakes and we have also removed the rockers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pressurize the system to verify we have good pressure on the injectors. What I've done is I've canceled out the, I plugged off the return line. This is the return coming from the back of the head. This is the return line from the diesel. Now the return line does need to be plugged if it's not plugged, then of course you're not going to be able to build pressure into the system. Um, we got a fitting here made, in, made onto, the, uh, onto the fuel line. This is so that we can actually put pressure into the system. Now there isn't a tool for this particular job. Detroit basically uh, explains that you have to make uh, your own fitting for this type of test. Now what we're going to do is, since I have it plugged off already, we're going to put it, uh, we're going to, we're going to actually add 80 pounds of pressure, we're not going to add any, anything more than that. Uh, these 60 series only run around 80 psi of fuel pressure, so you don't want to go above that. If you go above that, you can ac actually create a leak. You can bust an O-ring if you go older, over 80 psi. So I have the gauge hooked up. We got it regulated to 80 psi, um, so we're going to go ahead and add air to the system. Uh, let me move this light so you can get a, a better view of the top here. All right, so what we'll do here is go ahead and add air and we'll see what we get a leak from. Here we go, add an air. Okay, so you see the engine rotated there. I'm gonna go ahead and kill the air. Okay, so that's not supposed to happen. The engine is not supposed to rotate. Okay, what that is telling us is the air is actually being leaked down into the cylinder. So if this cylinder is at, at its top, uh, what, it, what, it, what actually just happened is when we added air, it's going to push that cylinder down and make this engine rotate. So we definitely have a leak. We're going to dig into this further. I'm going to pull these injectors to see what we find. So let's move right into that next. Okay, guys, so we have the rockers and the jake brakes removed. Uh, as you saw, we do have a leak. So what we're going to do next is we're going to pull the injectors to see if we can find which injector is giving us the problem. Okay, so I'm going to unbolt these hold down bolts. I'm going to go ahead and unbolt them all since we're going to be removing them. Now that I got those unbolted, we'll go ahead and start getting these injectors off. I'm going to go ahead and start pulling them, give you a little bit of light so you can see what we're doing here. I'm using a small pry bar to get these injectors out so we can get a view of what's going on here. one. All right. So 
I got the injectors popped loose. We'll go ahead and start pulling them out. Here's number one. As you can see, everything looks good on this injector. We're going to be replacing all the O-rings, but I'm just going ahead and pulling to see which one could be giving us our problem. Here's number two. Those, in, those rings look good as well. Pull number three, and there you go. See a busted O-ring there? See number, number three's O-rings completely gone. Looks like it may be just gone all the way. So there, there's uh, gonna be our problem right there. We'll keep looking at the other ones, see what other ones. Number four looks good. As I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and replace all the seals on these. I'm just going to go ahead and check them all out before we get them all the way pulled out. Okay, let me get this number five out. Number five. You can see number five O-ring is completely gone. Bottom O-ring on number five. So that's the bottom O-ring for number five there. You can see it here. Uh, I'm going to set this injector back over here. Number six injector looks good as well. The O-rings are still there. So what we found was here, number three O-rings gone. As you can see, number three's O-ring is completely gone. And number five injector O-ring is gone. So when we added air to this system, of course, as I mentioned, that air goes into the cylinder and that's why we were getting engine rotation. Um, this is a good test to do to find where you're actually losing pressure. Not all the time you're going to find um, from an injector cutout test are you going to be able to find this because due to low fuel pressure into the head, you're going to get erratic readings all the way across each, all the injectors. So even a cutout, as I mentioned, is not going to point out which injector is going to be bad. So with this particular engine, we did the pressure test and this is what we found. Um, we're going to go ahead and pull the rest of the injectors all the way out. We're going to clean these injector bores out, replace all these O-rings, put all new O-rings in it, reset everything, and we're going to test it again to make sure it's going to hold 80 PSI's and hold it well. Um, we don't want to go back together unless we can get that 80 pounds of pressure holding strong. So we're going to move on to that next. Um, so let's get right into it. Okay, so we have all the injectors pulled. Uh, one thing we like to find, or uh, we like to find out what happened and why it failed. Okay, we did notice, or I did notice when I was removing the hold down bolts, that they didn't feel like they were torqued down all the way. Um, these particular injectors, this is a brand new injector here, as you can see, uh, but you're gonna have three O-rings. You got one, two, three, and you have a lower O-ring down at the bottom. Okay, what I did notice here on number two, it had one still in the injector bore, and it also has one on the injector. So it looks like whoever installed this injector left the old washer down at the bottom. Now, if you look at number three, this is how we pulled out number three. It's completely split. Um, what these O-rings are designed to do is create a seal at the bottom of this injector to keep combustion gas from coming up. Um, as you can see, the tips of these injectors are pretty dark. Uh, so it, we're, we're kind of suspecting that these may not have been um, torqued down correctly, so that's why we're getting combustion gas eventually breaking this ring and uh, breaking your seal ring here. Um, number five did have a crush O-ring or did have the O-ring there, but as you can see, um, the injector is pretty black. Um, the hold down bolt did not feel like it was uh, too tight, um, and there's our lower O-ring that we're talking about there. So. We're going to replace all the O-rings with new O-rings with uh, OEM parts uh, from Detroit. Now these come with new hold down bolts and all your new washers here and the uh, actual bottom washer that we were uh, showing you that broke down here on number three. So we're going to uh, clean all this up, remove all these O-rings, put all new O-rings on there, put everything back together, uh, pressure test it again, uh, and we'll see what she does. So uh, we're going to be doing that next. Okay guys, so we have everything already replaced. We've got all new O-rings, all new washers, all the injector boards were cleaned out. Uh, everything's already installed. 
Uh, the torque settings on these particular injectors are going to be 37 foot-pounds for your first step. And your second step is going to be loosening a quarter turn, but don't loosen it all the way. And then you're going to go ahead and tighten it back down at 26 foot-pounds, and the last step is going to be 90 degrees. Okay? Put, you're going to also want to put new hold-down bolts, injector hold-down bolts. You don't want to use the same injector hold-down bolt uh, just because in case it's it stretched, you're, gonna get, uh, you're not going to get a right, the right uh, torque setting. So everything's already installed. Um, we got the air, the air system still, or the air test still hooked up. So I'm going to go ahead and add air, and we're going to see what it does. So here we go. Add in air slowly, up to about 60. I'm going to cut it off to see if we lose any pressure. Uh, we're not losing any pressure there. Let me turn my light down a little bit. This is the needle here. We're not losing any pressure. Looks good. So that's what we want to see at this test, during this test. Everything looks good there. So the next step is, of course, putting the rockers and the jakes back on and starting this truck up and see what she does. So if you got a question about your truck or any injector problems, make sure to leave a comment below. We'll be more than happy to help. I uh, hope you guys learned something. Make sure to subscribe to us if you're not subscribed to us and turn on that notification bell so you know next time we release another video. So until next time, guys, be safe.